the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. episodes 37 and 38 of Queen of Embers. I'm your game master, Daniel Fox. This is the gang called Playtesters, people who made Zweyander, made Josh Awesome, and now Queen of Embers. So, um, let's just jump right in. Walter's out tonight, uh, so we will not have Alistair uh, to join us, but the rest of us will be here. So, Let's talk about last session. What happened? I thought it went off without with a with a pretty well bang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What ha what happened? So you so you so you gather outside of Westgate, outside of Durendal, uh huh, with whom? With everyone else that's uh, along the the trip, and then who's that? You don't know names already? You guys aren't writing them down? That's Bigly, document work points. I haven't. Bigly. I thought you, na- I thought you were going to I have it. Wolfgang, Wolfgang, Sammy, here, and Bigly. Yeah. I mean, Wolfgang's easy because we've had multiple Wolfgangs. Bigly, and then the barrister is named. Yeah, the barrister is. I just haven't written barrister. That's what I've been calling <laughs> her the entire time anyway, so. <laughs> Rosalia Mansfield. Oh, I do have that written. Barrister Mansfield. I've been I've just been saying barrister. What's uh what's important about about her? She is uh the person who'll be doing the negotiation when we go to uh um, our destination. So, she is, but she's also won the favor of the queen very quickly. So she was sponsored yeah. by the Baroness. Yes. Her whole education and upbringing is thanks to the Baroness. So, that's right. So I think the way we can remedy this is to do NPC cards. So I'm running down Rosalia Mansfield. There's for Rosalia Mansfield. Who wants to be the owner of the NPC card that is not K? <laughs> Mike. K. I guess I have all the hints. Um, yeah, maybe they would decide to table something. There you go. We have Captain, Mike. quote, Captain Wolfgang Copper. Captain my ass. Captain, Captain Mike Captain. <laughs> yeah. Captain We've got Sammy Newhouse. Shipmate. <laughs> that was a good one. And Bigly, uh. Krung Bigly. Krum? Krum. Krung Bigly. I heard Krum. Krum Bigly. I'm calling her Krum. Krum. So, you what, all gather. What exactly is Krum Bigly? She has no title? She's a woman. She's the big woman. woman. She's the animal handler. Yeah, you <laughs> learned learned the other the other day. So you you depart. What was the name of the land ship? The Madeline. That's all right. Sweet Told you. Here you go. Madeline. Look at that. How long did it I forgot that we were using people, places, things, and cards beforehand, so I think it'll be probably helpful for us to review at the beginning yeah. of every game now, yep. so we all remember everything. Um, so yeah, so you depart westward from Durindal toward uh, the Steadwall Mountain, specifically bound on the path to Hastings. And you arrive in Hastings a little bit before nightfall, 
and your navigator, who had, who um, Alistair had hired, then parted ways with you. So what happened in Hastings? Uh, we met with the, uh, um, the religious leader who is also the, uh, the mayor, basically, of the town. Yeah. Who I cannot remember his name. And he said, uh, we'll get to you later. We'll get to you tomorrow. <clears throat> so he we went drinking. Well, some people went drinking. What was oh. his, do you recall what his name is, Kay? He's got four. He's got four titles. Uh, Brother, Brother Proctor. No, that's no. Not. Gamble. <laughs> Gamble. It's not Father Proctor Bishop. <laughs> Father, Father Proctor, Proctor Bishop Gamble. What do you mean? Uh, Proctor Roland. Lauren, I, Proctor yeah, Roland. Proctor Roland and Burger. He was a Burgermeister. He is the mayor. I had to find my notes. The same. <laughs> the Burgermeister and the the priest are the same. He's a burger maker. Here you go. He makes burgers. Proctor Roland. And he tells you when the Friday Father, You're thinking of Father Proctor Bishop from the previous no, priest came. No, his no, first no. name was Proctor. His last name was Bishop. And he was a priest named Father Proctor Bishop. Okay. I know he took us to the Raven's Walk. That's right. Which is the tavern. Mm-hmm. What happened there? Uh, we heard a bunch of dogs. Yeah, and then they, they locked the door. Yeah, which we didn't like, so we went out. Why they locked the door? Because uh, the dogs, the dogs, they were taking things and eating all the killing livestock. livestock and... yeah. But come to find out, it's really just the, the men of the mountain coming down and taking things. They're dressed like animals or creatures. Uh, and they had or... bronze claws. I believe they actually had some hunting dogs with them. Yeah, right. there were some dogs. And they hadn't hurt anybody, but. Instead of risking their own lives, they basically just let their livestock and everything that they own go get stolen. Mm-hmm. So what happened that evening? We said enough is enough. We went out there and we... Uh... Well, we had like two score oxen, right? Yep. That they could have walked off with? Yeah. Well, you know. So. I told the captain that we should go. He said that... We don't need to protect these people. And I said, these are the Baron's people. And he got really mad at me. <laughs> because I called him out. And then uh, <laughs> Alice said, said the exact same thing. So we left. They wouldn't do it. And Harper shot a cannon. Yeah, at he them. did. Yeah, he did. He blew a big old hole in the ground. And thanks that it rained, it didn't spread. <laughs> yeah. right. And then we lost a third of our oxen because of it. Uh, it, was like, it was like 25%. It was 11 yeah, but then we got three back. Remember, we got a couple right? back. Yes, we went, we went and we recouped some. Um, so wrestled, wrestled them, wrestled them. But it's gonna take a place so to repair this oh, yeah. giant because and of the damage. That's right. Because it was, it was leaning a bit beforehand, and then after the gunshot, it was leaning a lot. That's and right. Then we went to Father Brother Proctor Roland's house and met with him or because he had one of our letters <clears throat> right. that he had read. Mm-hmm. Well, of course he did. He's in a lorna. Yep. Dirty demo lore night. So, what is a lore night? Kill on sight. It's a priest. It is a priest of the learner. There's three faces to the gods that we. Uh, it's really one god, but there's three faces to the god. There's the learner, the, the martyr, and the steward. Why do people dislike the lore nights? Because they they're crafty. They <laughs> they hold all. They really try to like control all knowledge. It's because they're seekers of the truth, but they're not speakers of the truth. That's good. Can they control knowledge? They're all up in everyone's business and they won't say why. They control knowledge. Yeah, just tell me why. <laughs> why? Nothing but a heart. <laughs> yeah. Their whole path is to control knowledge and use knowledge to further it. Really, just their agenda. Their own I wonder self what that their may agenda. Be. <laughs> or that's what it looks like from the outside. Very mysterious group. I'm going to tell you they're mysterious. We're mysterious. <laughs> no. So, what happens in this meeting with uh, Proctor Roland? We call him out on his shit for reading our, our letters. Yeah, someone got a little angry there. <laughs> and then he told us about some of the people in Dorindal who are pushing against the Baroness, including Bruno Lehman. Yeah, there was a whole group of them there called... Uh, it's a bunch of merchants. Guiding hand. Guiding hand. I think it also should be noted, what did the message say? Uh, 
Oh, continue on. See the secession. Yeah. Yep. Which means apparently we're not kingsmen anymore. That doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that the king doesn't already know this is happening. Also, doesn't mean that the king doesn't want this ha- to happen, so he could take take the city from the baroness. And apparently, Gelman and Zox, who were the foundry owners of where the Zeppelin fell, were members of this guiding hand. Eustace Adelard was another one. I'll, I'll make my applications for it. Okay. Yeah, useless, useless Adelard <laughs> is. Uh, he's also the you know we know him as also the prophets. Right, handman, yeah. handman or mouthpiece. Whatever. I'll well, just call prof- him mouthpiece. Well, the prophet talks. I fixed it. So, to me, what it sounds like is there is, as as he said, Father Bishop Proctor, Proctor Gamble. Gamble, Proctor Roland, <laughs> Roland the Third. Uh, as he said, there's something larger going on here that you guys don't seem to see, but it seems pretty obvious to me that if, you know, uh, Useless is part of the uh, guiding hand, and he's also using the prophet's, you know, ability to speak to the commons, I mean, it's just, it, it all seems to be fitting together. I mean, they're just using, they're using the prophet for their own profit. You know what I'm saying? Well worded. They're using the profit for their own profit. That was a good one for Mike. Uh huh. <laughs> so that's what it seems like. That's what I, that's what I seem. He seemed to say there was something underlining with what he was telling us, and that seems to be the easiest path. But I could be wrong. Right. He said when we got to where we were going for the barrister to discuss, if we came back with some information, when we came back through, he'd have more information for us. Yes, an information swap. The all the all Illorna information swap. And you're always on the losing end. <laughs> they call it the the Illor- the Nine Fathers Swindle. <laughs> or the A Flip You For Real. A Flip You. A Flip You For Real. For real. <laughs> you and the Keezy Cocksuckle, what yeah, the fuck? fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... It is just a few minutes after you leave um, Proctor Rollins view the chapel. It's early day. You just wrapped up your conversation. Uh, for being an autumn day, it's actually fairly nice out. Um, it's delightful. Delightful. It's quiet. The people of Hastings are smiling toward you and thankful clearly that you had chased off the mountain men. The, uh, or the, uh, what do they call them? Picks? They didn't call them no. picks. Dogs, though, I remember. No, uh, I mean, the Randall the Long men, but Randall Long is in, in, he's dead now. He so does. Oh, sons. that's right. So that's the other thing that was explained to us. His sons are vying for power. So they think that this is some kind of weird power game that's going on, and why that's why this is going on. Who can steal the most from the the, the dumb villagers? Yeah, I think they said valley valley people, but they said that here for you. Yep. The men of the mountain, or the mountain men, or the no, oh wait wait no what's it called again? What's the mountain range? The Skedwall. That's they said it was something like that. I thought maybe I'm wrong. We call them dog soldiers. Dog soldiers. Mm. Yeah, the people at Hastings have creative names. <laughs> Let's call them what they are: dog man, <laughs> dog Earth. soldiers. Dog Earth. soldiers. So the dog soldiers. It has only been one. It has only been. Just the evening, they had just attempted to raid and had raid the Hastings just literally with the past like fifteen hours, and you would chase them away with the blast, book, book blast of the uh, Rubiquin, not the Puckle Gun, as I thought it was called, but the Rubiquin mounted atop the mighty Madeline, tall and soaring as its are its. Uh, 
Bows. I don't know if I'm going to call it mighty, but it's broken after one shot. <laughs> Anchor dropped and just kind of leaning one side. And already Sammy Newhouse has gone about in inquiring for um, lumber aid. Uh, you don't. You see Hurung Bigley. She is there tending to the oxen. Uh, Wolfgang Copper is surveying the entire thing and taking counts of the stores and the hull of the ship. Ensuring the wheels are sturdy and. How successful are they? Because remember what Proctor told us too that people of Hastings do not like the Baroness. Uh, they did. They are the Baron. They are the Baron's men. And Roland had agreed in the conversation, if you recall, to they vouch for your parts. Yeah. Despite your present company, but the people don't know that, at least. They don't know whose loyalty the Wolfgang and others owe fealty to. Oh, just go talk to them for about a half a second. They'll bring up the Baroness. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the sun, the moon, and the stars. But the village of Hastings is otherwise quiet. <clears throat> Idyllic, even, for a late autumn day. The leaves of the trees have turned a shade of bronze and blue and red. So the leaves have begun to fall. The grasses have begun to grow back from the reaping in October. A low heath settles across the, um, the lightly wooded uh, hills, lightly forested hills. The shape and shadow of the stead wall, blue and gray against the western horizon, is visible even from here, where clouds muster at its peaks. It is wet out from the rain the night before, fortunately extinguishing the fire in the middle of the hills. But none of the dog soldiers were killed. No animals were taken. You lost some oxen. But other than that, your host is in relatively fair shape. The travel here was long, tough. It's about to get tough. Can, boss, does, can we talk to this so called captain about how long they think these repairs are going to take? Winter is coming. Sure, we can do that. <clears throat> well, Jerwin. I think it might be. Well, I think it might be a bit more of a disappointing winter than you expect. Maybe like just you know, a couple hours worth. <laughs> just a couple hours. Like, worth like one episode, maybe. A heel <laughs> turn. Yeah. For no apparent reason. No apparent reason. A lot of rush production. Oh wait, sorry, we're talking about yeah. Queen <laughs> members, not <laughs> Game of Thrones. They re did a real good snow job there. <laughs> She's my queen. She's my queen. Just kidding. She's my queen. Okay. Uh, Never yeah. get over this well, Taryn, I, Taryn, I, I reckon, wasn't it supposed to be that we were going to part ways with this old tub around Hastings and then make our own way? Yep. Uh, I mean, I know this is a lot going on here and they got plenty to do, but really our problem? Can't we just move on? Well, either way, I think it deserves a conversation. Well, certainly. You know, you don't want to be stepping on a wolf game's toes, but, you know, we got we got our own shit to do. Yeah, I mean, stepping on a person's toes is liable to get you beaten in the turf out, if you know what I mean. Certainly. Yeah. You're fucking stepping on my toes? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Deadwood. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Utter. Rest <laughs> in peace, buddy. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers, by the way. Damn it, Dan. I haven't watched the movie. Are you yet. serious? I'm either. so sorry. Oh my god. Mm. I'm so sorry. Yep, just well, now to... you've given me a reason. Yeah. Try to yeah. watch the whole season okay, over again. Sorry, that's what I'm doing too. I'm trying you, to do the same you thing. You need not a reason to watch the whole season of Deadwood. Anyway, so it sounds like you want to make inquiry with the captain about moving on. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, I thought that was the original plan. We were supposed to get them to Hastings and then take no. the rush with the bear. There's, well, a group of, there's a column of soldiers. Oh, I knew that. That's the whole idea. There's a, there's a bunch of whole blue going on with the the thing being rebuilt or fixed or whatever. And you want to move on? Well, we'll leave. That's what I, I. That's my idea. Just leave the 
this this thing that's just leave to it. Give. Yeah. It's their it's their deal. They got people. <laughs> Warren, you're my favorite new person. <laughs> but I don't think that barrister is going to come with us without that contraption. Correct. It's the gift. Just want to put a bargain in. It's coming. Right, so I'm going to go and uh, speak with Wolfgang. Or at least figure out how long he is. He said three days. Maybe there's a way that we can help. <laughs> Ideally. They said three days on the pad. That's what Sandy said. How do you feel about hard labor? Yeah. I feel that you will be, you and Warren and Alistair will be very good at that. Yeah, so, some, some, uh-huh. of the, some of our number are as good as tits on a boar hog for hard labor. Uh, yes. You ain't wrong. But you can always use more gophers. <laughs> I am go very for this, go good for that. at those things. I, I can negotiate prices, but I'm afraid I am, quite frankly, by your analysis, memories at this point. <laughs> Do I need a bookmark? Is your arm still messed up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah I'll take one. Bookmark me, please. Okay. I do. Okay. So. Thor. About that many, you know. <laughs> right there. So, yeah. yeah. I like Warren's idea. If you can sell that. What? Sell up and out? No, I'm still leaving immediately. Right. Letting that. I don't see that happening. Wooden tub rot in the street where it's at. The way I see it, we're asked to do one thing, we can do it. We didn't sign up for fixing shit and doing every other thing. But the captain will tell you you need to pull your weight. <laughs> so the thing captain is, can say plenty. I answer for Tamlin. That's exactly what I told him. <laughs> yeah. Thing is, let me talk to him. We'll see what's going on. Fair enough, you're the boss. Yeah. So you're going to go and speak with uh, Wolfgang. Well, not surprisingly, he is near the, uh, he's near the great ship, the battle line, that seems to cast a long shadow, almost as if it was already the latter part of the day. Her mighty bows are rising above the ground, supported by those great trestles and framework that already Sammy Newhouse and Frank Bigley are repositioning pegs to pound through with a heavy two-handed mallet. To reaffirm the uh, the ship in its cradle, and you can see that there are ropes moored along the other side and spiked into the ground to give it some pull as they're shifting it literally inside this cradle. They get the oxen tied up. She comes over. She whistles, and the oxen start to begin to pull as they the animals kind of slowly trudge, trudge, trudge forward. Ah. That's right. <laughs> That's more of a sheep, but it sounded like a goat. Yeah, yeah that was that was Agnes. <laughs> <laughs> Agnes getting pissed off. Hi, 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 hi. They squall and yelp and bark and burp and make all manner of noise as this team of oxen literally begins to pull the ship to one side, and you can see them kind of moving in the muck in the mud with their broad hooves as they're trying to pull the metal line to realign it to the starboard. Ho, oh, oh, ho! Sammy calls out and Harung stops the oxen as they rest. The ship just kind of makes this heavy groaning sound and you hear this the thud! And the whole ground seems to tremble as the ship kind of sets once again into this into this kind of cradle. I, in my old house, I removed... Uh, our, whenever we remove one of the large, the, one of the first limbs in the tree, the tree is like 98 years old. I mean, that was a huge, it was massive. When the, uh, they cut the, the first limb down and hit the ground, the whole house shambled. And that limb was probably a ton. So imagine the weight of this great ship, because the, the ground beneath you kind of... <laughs> trembles beneath you. Already they are fraught with sweat and stress. And there's a sense of relief as Sammy Frong and the Captain Wolfgang 
go over to share some water and wipe their brows free of sweat, despite the fact that it is a somewhat chilly autumn day. Idyllic, but although the valley may be idyllic, it is still hard work, hard labor. <clears throat> you approach. Good morning. To you as well, Wolfgang says. He strokes at his graying beard. I hope you rested well. Rested as best as we could. We're operating in just a few hours sleep, as I'm certain you all are as well. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, you all are very tired. I forgot about that. <clears throat> they, they ate the stew yesterday. Yeah, we did. You did, but you didn't sleep. Good point. <laughs> so we didn't sleep throughout the we didn't sleep through the night. No. No. You all slept from sleep deprivation. So that's, uh, wow. 19 mental peril. 19 physical peril. Ooh. So then I'd be incapacitated if I never remembered. So you're probably sleeping then right now. Yep. Yeah, you look over and already you can see that Harper is sawing logs beneath a nearby shade of an apple tree. Anybody else incapacitated? Because I was like, ignore three skills when I fired that cannon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I was like, oh, I don't got a great chance. I'm tired. Bang. Well, that went well. Haunted by strange dreams, you suffer six corruption for a contestation. Yes. Your dreams turn toward your queen. Your queen of embers. My queen. My sun, my moon, my stars. The Baroness. She gave you the luck. Your dreams are uh, lustful, mm -hmm. and you will awaken with nocturnal emissions yeah. due to your drawback. All right. You can still feel beyond the uh, the bright sky uh, from your part of war, and that uh, be somewhere out there. The Leviathan's eye is watching over it all. You can already. You also notice something along the way. The Wolfgang and the and uh, the Bears of Rosalia are getting close. Hmm. There is a there is a something blossoming there beyond kinship. The barrister, you mean? The barrister and Wolfgang, okay. and maybe even you, maybe even you long for the uh, the warmth of the bed of the woman back in <laughs> back in Durendal. Who knows? Your mind may turn toward it. It may not. Could just be warmth that you're looking for. So he oh. says, he wipes his brow. Well, uh, the barrister is somewhat nearby. I just wanted to know a little bit more about what the plan was for carrying on, because uh, if I remember right, <clears throat> isn't this uh, isn't this where we're supposed to dive at? As I look around and make sure that there's no bystanders. He arches a brow. Diver. Well, I mean, you know, we are supposed to go one way, you're supposed to go another, and that way, you know, Barrister Rosalia is in this danger. Yes. Not here. No, not until we get to the mountains. Huh. I suspect by then that Commander Tenenfelder. And his folk will then head on to Elmeren's gate, and we shall take a suddenly route toward the mall. So by by we, you mean you with the oh, the Madeline here, and we're going north. Commander Tannenfelder led a contingent separately. You recall this. Right? It was only three days ago. I thought that this big old boat was supposed to be the contingent that was supposed to be the distraction. Ha! No. The barristers, very valuable. They have sent the distraction forward to the tenant fellow and his men. They will take the common roads. <laughs> They will go from Hastings to Fiefstead and then to Elmeren's Gates. Instead, we shall go into the mountains, avoid Fiefstead, and instead head south to the Maw. Then we will cross overland to Elmeren's Gates. 
Surf it. He lays out a map. No, I understand that. What I don't understand is the Madeline. Is what it, don't you understand? Is it coming with us or is it going with them? Trying to tell him, fellow, has been a very passive of the mountains. All right, so that was explained a bit different to us. So now we're all caught up. Well, maybe you misremember. Well, perhaps we're suffering from a group misremembering then. All six of us. I highly doubt that. Um, the, uh... Huh? Go ahead. The, uh... I remembered it the other way. The wind yeah, I remembered saying. it the other way. Too. Right? But you guys were sure on the other one, so I just... They were the distraction, and we were the... Right. Carrying the gift. No, I didn't know about the Madeline. No, we did not know about the Madeline until we got to the gate. We, well, we her, knew there was a gift. We didn't know the context this. that we were just supposed to take the parish church, and there was a distraction. The gift came Got out it. at the end. Yeah, and I knew that I knew that Wolfgang was coming with us because we had others that you made sure to, you know, go. Okay, is it all of them or just her? Yeah. So, anyways, right. uh, okay. So, seeing as how we're going to be going <laughs> through a swamp with this thing, oh, through the swamp, let's through the mall. Through a swamp with the thing, because the mall is a swamp. Oh, well, it's a good thing that it can float. Yeah. Um, and so can the cows that are uh, pulling it. Have you not seen oxen swim? How do you think they ford rivers? Right, so. I joked. Is there anything that uh, we. Can do to help out. Sing is out. So we're stuck here. We can start charting our route. You seem to know a lot about the maw. Here. He shoves the map in your hand. Perhaps you can take over. We lost our navigator after all. He was not brave enough to go through the stead wall. In knowing the uh, history of your torturer, Alistair, I sincerely doubt he'll be the one to take us through the mountains. Well, he places the map in your hand. <laughs> he, 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 he brooks no disagreement as he turns around. Is there anything else? I need to get back to my work. No. Nothing at all. Taryn comes over a bit incensed. Well, that guy's a pretentious prick if I ever met one. I, could, uh, I already knew that. Tinker. I mean, he's saying that all six of us were misremembering things about the distraction and all that. No, no, no. I mean, the distraction is the, the men, but we were not going to take the banister. This gift thing is all new. Hmm. Follow wax. So now this gift thing is putting us behind. This gift thing also is going to be far easier to spot on the road. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Giant beacon. Come. Maybe makes, something important you can steal. It makes the barrister's appearance a little bit harder to keep under wraps. It seems to be futile. Well, she stays in the bloody thing, they won't know she's on it. Sure. Can you get her to stay in there? You sure as hell can't seem to do that. It's counterproductive is what I think we're all trying to say. So, yep. as, it, as it goes... I don't really care if she stays in or out. Most people are probably not going to know what she looks like, but carrying a ship that large attracts attention. Yeah. That is when we got here. Yeah, it's kind of, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of productive. She, right, but it doesn't do. matter if she's inside or out. They're, they'll know we're here. Well, I think he was meaning for protection. Leave no. her in, but remember she doesn't want to stay in. The only thing I was talking about is they won't know she's on it if they can't see her. That's it. You'll know something. So, so my other my other question is, uh, did we see any women in the contingency of soldiers that left? There have been women among them. Female soldiers and such. Yes. I mean, a woman disguised as the barrister. Were they intelligent enough to do this, or...? Well, the best way to disguise her would have been to put her in a soldier's gear. What in the blazes are you doing here? You hear from up above. 
on the ship. You can hear the sounds of the bears from Rosalia crying out. Is she crying out to us? She's talking to someone. I look up. Bester. You can't see anything. After all, you're at the bottom of a 20 foot tall ship. Well, she ain't looking over yelling at us, and she's not yelling at us. Yes, but who is she yelling at? No, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna climb up the ladder as quick, the rope ladder as quick as possible. You're going to ascend the ladder as quickly as you possibly can, suspecting the uh, the worst to happen. Go ahead and roll a uh, routine athletics test. See how if you can get up there. It's a fail forward test. Okay. Routine athletics. Uh, Fifty-two and I rolled a critical success. Nice. You get up there very, very quickly and look around, kind of looking around the top deck, and you can see that she's outside of the forecastle where she with the cab, the interior cabin, and you can see that kind of not far from her are these two dirty-looking stowaways uh, whose hands are stained with soot, and they have. They're wearing uh, rotted flowers and a necklace around their around their chest, around their necks, and are wearing these long, ragged-looking uh, overcoats. We were, we were only coming to worship. This was the birthplace of the suit-stained prophet. Please, you must forgive us. The woman is begging, and she's on her knees. Don't tell them we're here. And then they turn around and see you come up topside. I'll uh, pull out my um, my pistol. It's time to leave the ship. No buts. This is where you exit. The two uh, kind of stand walking very slowly as you've got them in your sights. Rosalia quickly kind of comes to your side immediately as you kind of push her behind you. And the two stowaways uh, begin to move toward the rope and you see two people descend down down below on the, on the, ground, on the floor. Sorry, on the ground. That's how the English say it on the floor, right? If you drop it on the ground, it's the bottom of your car. Okay, they start to descend down the rope ladder, and you can see these 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 two people who are clearly not from here, and they smell of ferrous iron and burning incense, and they are clearly some sort of flagellants, perhaps you would guess. You can see that they have they have uh, burned their hands. Uh, as if, and it's still scarring and healing, uh, where they have borne some sort of mark that says thir- that's 13 on their arm. Uh, the other one has burned his hand to almost a cinder, and it's wrapped in cloth. Please, don't hurt us. We were, we were just coming here to worship. We, we wanted to see it. We, we didn't know what else to do. No, it looks like you're doing a good enough job of that yourself. Please, d- don't take us before the magistrate, the woman says. You must understand, I was a woman of much import back under Rindle, but we came to worship. We thought that he would be aboard. We thought we could get close to the Fireborn. Why would I take you to the magistrate? But, but we stowed away on the ship, the man says, kind of blundering with his words. Uncertain, uh, uncertain how to react to this, to this uh, question. Oh. oh, you need a. It's a long walk back to Durendo, isn't it? Tis, the man admits. Is there any others? No. Others tried, but. Well, they were not faithful enough, I suppose. They did not believe hard enough. So, you was thinking. You get to see the prophet if you was here. Tis the prophet's cradle, he admits. Sorry, tis the prophet's cauldron, he says. Yeah. The anvil in which he was born. Born so, from fire. So what? And you, soot. You think he wakes up so, every day, yeah, or something? Like, you know, no matter where he beds down, he wakes up and relives the same thing over and over again. We only came to wash it. Hmm. Okay. Well, what was your intention, knowing the thing was moving? Were you going to go along with it till you got to where it was going? At the time it had started, we 
We knew we could not abandon it. We didn't know, in truth, where you were even going. Hmm. To find you here in this, uh, Hastings. So they kind of look down toward the sign. What are they wearing again? They're wearing rags. Hey, hey, Hopper. Oh, he's sawing logs. He's beneath the tree. Warren. Mm-hmm. Come up here. Watch the Baroness. Or the Barrister. I'm going to search the rest of this thing. All right. You will give a proper scrubbing down of the ship as you look in every cracking crevasse and uh, storage housing and wherever crate and nook and cranny would be on the Madeline, and you find no one else, but you do find where they were betting. Okay. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I mean, I figured that would be what you'd ask me yeah. to do anyway. <laughs> well. We meant no harm, the man says, in a high, lilting voice. I'll, uh, look him over to see if it, if, uh, I believe that something could be concealed or hidden amongst what he's wearing. Roll a secret awareness test. Sadie. 51. Okay. And a 26, so I'll keep it. Okay. Nothing that would be apparent. Unless it was stuffed in some orifice. <laughs> I'm not that curious. <laughs> I call it a prison pocket, I think, is what the... There's lots of names. <laughs> none, um, of all, none of them pleasant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think he did. You can see that this man and woman appear to be perhaps well coiffed uh, if they were not wearing rags. They carry themselves with a dignity that does not speak of those who were born on the street. So... Let me check. Let me ask something here. You see, you know how to say your letters better than me. And you're wearing rags. I'm assuming you have some means, right? Well, we gave all that up. We gave away our material trappings. You see, my what what concerns me is how you're going to get back to Durendal. Because we ain't going back to Durendal. Well, I understand. I suppose we shall find a way. Uh, what have you been eating? We took what we had. So Hot nothing. bread, tack, oh. cheese. We bedded below. You still got more up there? Not much. Hey. We did not fully prepare for this trip. We thought, well, we didn't know quite what to think. I'll bring all the refuge up and yeah. just toss, over, toss the it edge. over the edge. Clattering and banging and cloth. Everything is thrown off the top of the ship. It's clean, boss. Come on down here. Right. Thank you. Both of us? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for as that, a, she says. As long as you, as long as you, sure that there ain't no, nothing else hiding up there. We'll do, boss. You're welcome, Pastor Mansfield. Um, may I make one suggestion? When Quite, we, please. When we're not says. here, can you please pull up the rope? <laughs> she nods. Sammy will yell. The captain. I, I think you know all of this by now. So, just she precautions nods. more than anything. Yes, of course. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course. Down below, they collect their things. Helen. Yeah. A moment. Well, I, I think we, we all need to have a little talk about this. But, uh... Me, uh... You watch them? Yeah. Or you want me to... Just watch them. Well, you know, sometimes... It takes more of a Alistair hand to get things done. Yeah, but you're not Alistair. Well, Alistair well, checked. Well, he's asleep with Papa. We're good, we're good. I mean, if you want to ask him questions, I guess, I mean... No, 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 that's not my job. Okay, 
Okay, watch him a bit. Alright, alright, watch him. Got it. Uh, what do you need? I do believe it might not be the best idea to let them go back to Durendal. Keep in mind the fact that we are carrying cargo that is not supposed to be known of. Yeah, you see, I've, I've had a couple thoughts. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd like to discuss it with the group. Because even though I can be decisive, I don't always see everything. Well, that's fine. Um, no, I... I don't see how we can let them go back. I, I definitely thought of that, but when I was asking them how they was going to get home, I was trying to get more information. Well, see they did walk. Religious zealots, they tend not to plan things, obviously. Look at the religions they follow. What do you mean? That they're cultists. You think that they actually have a plan for their life? No, they're planning on the prophet to tell them everything. So of course they don't have any plans. Well, I'm not a big fan, but you know, Demish, or as they called him, the God Emperor, he used to be a cult. Mm-hmm. Well, he moved on, I guess. And now he's a god of a nation. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I see what you're saying. So. Do I hear that? But actually, Dimish is uh, more considered like a saint, boss. But uh, <laughs> if, if we want to, we're not, we're not. This is a theological uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah. See, up here he's considered a saint. You go down there, talk to the common folk, not the aristocrats who know better. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm just not used to your, uh, I mean, uh, the yoke. <laughs> now, now, I mean, it, it, yeah, you're all vernacular. At least that's what I hear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, no. No, I, I say this one thing about these these fools. It took us three days to get here uh, with oxen and horse. It takes five for them to get back. The mountain men are running wild. Uh, they probably won't make it back. So I think, we, unfortunately, she's right. Not the unfortunate part that she's right, but unfortunately, we can't just send them back. No. I think she's right to the simple fact that not only can we not send them back because of what we have on board, mm-hmm. but they're not going to live. No. No. Just, so just we've got... We've take, got... Him to, take him to the proc- proctor and let him handle the situation. Because he is one that knows the situation. So we've got a couple of possibilities. Well, we've got three, but I'm pretty sure we've narrowed that one down. That's let him walk back. They're going to die if they walk back. I mean, I'm okay with it. Less fools in this world. And I'll look directly at him. And I'm talking about you. Less fools in this world. To feed, to feed and suckle on the king's teat. The better. We could just leave them here. To their own devices. Again, let's go through this. No, no, They're no. They're penniless. They don't have enough food to make it more than, uh, I'll go with a ration d- a day or two, if that's it, they scavenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've not missed meals. They're from my circle. They look gently born. They don't know how to miss meals. They're starving right now from, from rationing. They're going to die. They both look rather well fed. Certainly not suffering from any sort of malnourishment. They lived high on the high on the hog, so to speak. If they their dead giveaway of their their station station, yes. You choose what to do. I'm just saying that if they speak, it could ruin this entire thing. It Here's could. what I think. I say we take them with us. We take them with us. Yo. Saying what I was going to ask about. But then it'll work. You better talk to uh, your boss. The oh, captain. yes, I will be doing that. But you see, if, oh, it worked. if the three of you didn't want to do it, then why would I even take it to him? I don't want to do it. I want these. Again, they're just going to suckle off of our resources then. No, they, will have to, they will have to work. They will have to hold their hair. Oh, I understand. Oh, 
Oh, man. I Did guess they see? can sleep in the uh, cockpit with me or the, the crow's nest. Didn't you grow up in town? I did. And didn't you suffer some hardships? I don't know the whole story because you've told me time and again it's not my business. And it's not. But I mean, I, I at least know that much, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you understand the nun, yeah? Right. So, what's to say that they can't grow from this hardship that they're <laughs> experiencing now and possibly be of some use? Believe you me, I'll take great pleasure in putting those two to work. But zealots don't have use. Every fun has a use if you use it right. Mm, no. They are cannon fodder or chattel, whichever way you want to put it. But well, here's the thing. We can't have them going flapping their gums at who knows what, who or having their death on our conscience. So the only opportun- other, other uh, option is for them to go with us. All right, boss, I don't care. We wasted so much time on these two that, uh, you know, I feel like I feel like we're just spinning in circles. So you got two choices. We you have to, to wait for this to get done. Talk to the captain and do your own way. Just the proctor or the captain. You There's see? only two ways. Well, but I want to know th- what you want. There's always a third way. You can just kill you him. May, you may not get it, but I do want to know what you want. I, I'm done. I've already said my piece. You don't want him with us? No. What's going on over here? We're found being quiet. Uh, wait, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to talk to him, so I'll uh... Reaper's going to come to you in a moment. We've got, uh, we've got two uh, stowaways. Well, ain't that something, Sammy Newhouse says. You know, I've been in every, I know every floorboard, running board, door, handle, everything I've been up and down, up and side, all around this damn thing. How the two of you find your way on here may not find you? They give a story, he gives a story. There's a bit of a back and forth between Sammy and Wolfgang and the stowaways that they kind of come to full, they all come to circle on. Oh, they come to center. Where they were at. Yeah, they come to center on like the story together. I'm going to scrutinize them to see if they're lying because if, if he didn't find them, scrutinize doesn't two. Add up. The, the, the two, the, the, the cultists. Yeah. Okay. Make a secret scrutinize test. Actually, okay. I, I think Elisa would too. Yeah. Okay. You may well try. Story. Okay. Uh, my chance to succeed is 49. And I rolled a 13. 62. Keep it. Yes. No, I don't have anything that affects scrutiny. And that is a 23. Yes. I will keep it. Yep, you know, really good. He's sort of feeling at this point from them they could be fibbing, but they speak in a very high, they're clearly well born, well bred. Okay. Come from a higher stock. Well then, Wolfgang says, the question is what to do with these two. What are your names again? Jonathan and Cecilia Vanda, he says. No, you share a surname. No, they say it. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know that. They share a surname. They're husband and wife is what he's asking. Or brother brother and sister. sister. Yeah, that's what. You're related to Indeed, Cecilia gave me her hand in marriage, not but three winters ago. Jonathan admits. Well, congratulations. Quite the honeymoon you've been on, then. And what was, was there stuff in a place that you would have found if you walked by it, as I looked towards, uh... Well, that's what NPC cards are for. Sammy. <laughs> well, I don't Sammy. Want, I don't see him. Yes, well... Sammy. They must have been high and good. I told you, boss. They were, they were, they were behind the uh, the barrels of uh, of powder. Probably screwing about like a bunch of rats. But there wasn't much of us up top, anyhow, right? There Just wasn't the barrister no. and uh, I mean, Staples. I, I missed I missed them too. I was downstairs. I was with Sammy trying to get loading those cannons. I mean, I'm just as much as Paul. So. Wolfgang, we 
we have a couple cho we have a few choices and one we don't think is really an option. Wanna let them go back to Durandal, but with them seeing what they've seen it's not a good idea. Two, leaving them here. Or three, taking them with us. Putting them to work. Well what I'm gonna do frame. But I am charged to take this gift to the west. If I am not its true captain. I have no jurisdiction here. So, yeah. I was trying to come to an accord before we came to you. Before we, we had decided. He's just asking your opinion what you think. Well, he's, he's saying he doesn't have one. Alright. I'm also a bit confused. I thought this was your expedition and you were making the decision. Am I am I mistaken? He takes a pause. I warn you, woman, do not pull up that thread. Understand, sir. I'm not trying to get your goat, as it were. I'm trying to understand. Roll. Your here. damn Dufresne, he says, kind of roaring. You've got the king's orders. You've got the the. Steed's Hill, you got the papers, you got the damnable badge. Why would you even ask me? What is my opinion worth to you anyhow? You have asked us to talk to you. The matters I'm not trained in. I am no judge, nor am I no killer. You want to kill a man, fine. It's on your conscience, not mine. You want to take the stories with you? Do so. It is your choice. It is not mine. Well, um, you, I, you ask a, you ask a seamstress to build you a crystal tower. <laughs> so he walks away. I, I asked a man to make a decision. <laughs> I'll step over to Sammy. Uh, you know, when your boss, my boss, well, it seems to always go poorly, but um, will you let him know that I, I talked to the, uh, the barrister and I haven't heard. She's, anytime she's up there by herself, she's going to pull the, the rope ladder up by and then we're just supposed to yell up that she'll let it down for any of us, but no one else. Well, I suppose that's probably smart. I don't... They may have found their way here, but... I didn't see him either, Sammy, so... Yeah. I don't know. I'm not blaming you. I'm, you're not blaming me. We're both over the damn bottom of the ship, so... That's right. Steeples, we're both burnt over this barrel. We can... <laughs> yep. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just solve the situation. That's what I say. So yeah. uh, pull the ladder up, make... Make our lives easy. We've got one yay, we've got one nay. So there we go. Thanks, Sam. None. I mean, I'm still going to decide, but I like to hear it. Well, I should say, Rosalia the barrister said, Rosalia Mansfield, are you seriously considering putting these people to the sword? Sword? Oh. I heard talks of letting them to die, or murdering them, to keep them from talking. Oh yeah, that was Wolfgang putting words in me mouth. I swore I could have heard it from somebody else down here. Who said that? Well, I simply stated Warren said it. Just Warren said it jokingly. I was just playing, you know. And I said if we let them walk back, they would most likely die. But from the mountain man exposure. The multiple things that could kill them because they are so ill prepared. I was just putting it out there. I didn't actually think we should do it. It was just... Oh, I must have not heard it because I knew you weren't serious. I, I wasn't serious. That's that's the thing. So, so there's really two choices. Turn them over to the proctor here who mm -hmm. would take whatever, whatever legal means he sees fit or we take them with us and make a decision when we get to where we're going. Yeah, what's punishment for stowaway anyway? Death. Hmm. You want to hear now bird law or maritime law? <laughs> it is death. Is it not barrister? What if... Well, she... Or, or, she, uh, or swimming, which is death. For purposes, if this was old Lork, they would set them to the cauldron and let them swim to the other side. 
which is death. In the lake, mayhaps. Most people born of the Vale are strong swimmers. In truth, the Aradane rarely set to sail beyond Chanda. And when they do, the captains of the ship will handle things to their own accord. But I've certainly heard stories of walking the plank. <laughs> right then. Well, Barrister, this affects your safety. What would you say? I think entertaining murdering anyone is a... We were not entertaining that. We said the two choices. Take them with us. We'll lock them up. Let them earn their keep by working, or leave them here with, with the, with the magistrate. Well, the steward would demand that we all give a part of ourselves for the whole for the community. I say, putting them to work would be fine. Holding them like prisoners would be foolish. We have to feed them regardless. Why not, why not put them to work? We'd need to pick up extra food if we did it. Well, I still didn't hear your opinion. Mm -hmm. I still didn't hear your opinion, Elisa. She and I already said the same thing. Aye. Oh, you did? Yes. We were in agreement. Even with the prophet. 40 minutes ago, before Captain, the captain raged and screamed at you. Unlike Wolfgang, I can make a decision and tell you. <laughs> yep. I think that they should stay here. I think taking them with us is a liability, especially considering they say this is some kind of holy relic. Should we fire another cannon? Should something else happen to it? Who knows what end they would jump off of? Most mm -hmm. likely the deep one. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I don't trust what their reactions are. You think? You They've think? obviously given up a life of luxury or well to do to follow this soup stain prophet. I don't trust their. You think that nosy busybody would would uh, listen up and said, "Hey." Please don't kill him. I don't know. I do know, however, that those that tend to follow a crazy man themselves are not necessarily sane. Fact. And to assume that we could trust them to work and to be safe, that we won't be able to watch them at all times, I think makes us just as insane. Agreed. Because our one job, truly one job, and she's up there on the above us, is to protect her. Not this thing, not these other people, and definitely not these two. See, that's my problem with it, because part of the safety part's keeping it secret. We can't very well guarantee the, se the secrecy if they're here, or mm -hmm. can we? Yeah, that's one thing I was thinking of. It seems like the four of you are in an impasse without a fifth vote. Only if you waited until Harper was awake later tonight yeah, to make your that's decision. Saying, I'm, yeah. I'm done with this. I suppose so we can we can figure it out. We, we can wait on it. Yeah, we Tie them up, throw them in the bottom until we figure out what to do. So, well, um, one last thing. This should be quick. What did you do before this? Who are you asking? The um, two uh, cultists. Stone. Cecilia and Jonathan. Well, I was born a privileged life. Didn't do much, I must admit. I sent my, I attended to my letters. You didn't read to the needs of the court. Oh yes, I spent quite, I spent many days reading and writing. Mm -hmm. So it's a passion of mine, a hobby, if you will. You know maps. I do know my catalogues. Yes. Jonathan says, kind of. He'd straighten his cravat if he had one. <laughs> and your lady wife. Uh, though I guess I don't need to call her. Lady. I was brought up in forming school, she says. <laughs> Twas a champion fencer, I was. That's dangerous. So you're handy with an Abby. A what? Rapier. Right well. I said to my husband, would rather me attend to a civil needle instead of an, a sword, but yes, in short. And what do you reckon, what is your opinion on everything that's going on around here? I'm sure you heard a thing or two up there. She 
looks to her husband and he looks to her and she steps forward and says, I know that we are standing in the reliquary that born the, the, that, that gave birth to the fireborn. Oh, that is the only thing that matters in this world. You damn know. You, damn, damn, well, you damn well know I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. The matter at hand here, why we're here. You heard us jawing about it all the way here, right? Jawing about? Yeah, talking. Uh, yes. I know that you are some sort of secret agent. Intriguing, yes, she says. Warren. An admission from the Baroness, no less. Warren gives Taron a look. All right. Well, we ain't decided yet what to do with you. So, I hope you're comfortable. <laughs> Jonathan and Cecilia I'll lash Vander him. will... I'll lash them to the, uh, the frame that they've, something. Okay. that they've put over the ship. Hmm. A spot of water, if you wouldn't mind. That's up to you, boss. Yeah. I'm going to walk away. At least I would. She'd pull her, her yeah. water skin and give him some. I'm walking away and I'm going to go lay down next to Harper. I'm done with all this. The day is long and tiring. You all rest for the better part of it. Until. Well, not nighttime, but. Close to it, at least. How much lumber did I gather? Sawing logs? <laughs> Endless. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the dad jokes just keep on. What was your dad joke earlier? You were just saying that. <laughs> something about, something, I really, something about the dice tower, yeah. Oh. I had a really good one. I know what it was, but I'm not going to say it because it was a pun. <laughs> oh, dad jokes were in there. So, it's not quite sundown, but it's growing toward it at least. The, the sun has not yet disappeared beyond the stead wall to the west. But you would gather it's probably about four o'clock or so. Knowing that the mountain range is so high, the, the sun shall serve, Algol shall set sooner than later. It will always be that way in the mountains, you know that. Morning comes late and evening comes quickly. So there you have it, you see. We're at an impasse of what we could do. All right. Well, I just did. Thank you. The bastard is already actually seemed a bit favorable to taking him with us, but I think that's because she views the alternative as death. Um, I'm in agreement with her. I think we take him with us. Well, fuck. <laughs> well, I don't know what else she could possibly do with him. I, mean, I ain't says, gonna kill him. You gonna kill him? There's no killing. Good, right. Leave them with the fucking right. magistrate. Right. Is that, oh, so you want to leave them here? Yes. Was that spy master son of a bitch? Is that Lauren and I? Who cares? I don't trust him far as I can throw him. Oh, fine. Fine. I'm, I'm going to think this. When I'm on that ship, they are not on it with me. They can walk for all I care. There you go. Like I said, I'll take great pleasure in putting them to work. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. then you're their caretaker. We'll do. That settles it. Move him out front and let him navigate as he seems to have a fancy for maps. Well, he can join me here down below, Wolfgang says. This Jonathan Vander, whatever fancy pants name he has, is truly a man of his catalogs, then we shall see to it that he will play the role of guide as best he can. But I feel that we do agree on one point, Master Steeples. That's what Wolfgang says. We can't trust them. So we certainly can't leave them alone to guide the way. Yeah. Nay. I agree. They might guide us into something that they've already planned for this thing. Other cultists. That might be their whole conspiracy here. Yes, a great conspiracy in the mountains of Steadwall. I wouldn't take this too lightly, no offense, but it doesn't 
set rack. I have more bolt coming along like this. Yeah, it's because somebody be. born of means has never tried to live below that, or somebody born of low means has never tried to be bigger than they well, are. How they? I'm just saying that we got sensitive, sensitive things going on around here, and uh, I can't say that I, I'm I'm in the middle of everything, but uh, you won't meander I'm just on the road that. like sheep. I told you what you should do. Leave somebody with them. We clearly don't trust him. We agree with that. Right. That's war. Just yeah. Said no. we, planned it, we just assumed the worst. You he's read the maps. He's talking about doing the maps. Oh, sure. No, sure if, thing. If he's doing that, <laughs> I'd be willing to, to watch over. Well, I can read, not necessarily maps. You want to watch over them? I suppose I can. I'm used to his type. Should not trust this man on his own. Of yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you on that. One of you who can read the stars needs to be with us now when we set back out on the road, Wolfgang says. My studies were towards the ground, more likely a table. Yeah, she was more of the terrestrial and not the celestial. Yes, I think we've crossed that path twice now. We have. I just learned them words like a month ago. <laughs> Let him use them. I'm speaking of mind. <laughs> but, I. Possibly with his assistance can figure this out. It's a lot to rely on. Crazed cultist for, but have we much other choice? Yeah, we do. And that would be. Yeah. <laughs> when the sun rises follows. tomorrow, awaken us and tell us what your decision is. Well, like we're tired of us back and forth. No. Wolfgang will stand and I'm heading back to the Raven's Loft. That is our decisive leader. Oh man, it was, you tell a joke. And... Well, y'all have been walk, talking around in circles. You no, we, oh. we've already decided we were taking them by All right, well, yeah. then, and, and so then. Wolfgang just has it. an axle and, that fell off the wagon we, up his And we up. talked last time about <laughs> who was navigating. Somewhere about day back. He, some got stuck up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere about day back. <laughs> now, Alistair's man had been in charge and Navigation, right? Now we ain't got nothing the man. We got this other man, but we can't trust him. So who's the man that we put with him? You said you? So you're navigating now. I'm learning. Right, Elise? I have what? learning. I don't have... Well, ain't none of us got it. Hey, Forrester. You're the strongest, right? right? Forrester, Sandy says. Yeah. Mind if I take a look at that map there? I don't mind. Here you go. Sammy, do you know how to read a map? No, I'm just trying to understand where we're going. All I see on this map is a uh, black fire pass. That's where we're going. Ah, oh, shit. Is that a problem? I, I, have, I have just, I have the greatest and easiest solution. Hey. If we will just step back from this and remember who we are. We are the Dufresne. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This man is in our charge because of what he has done. He is legally bound to us now. We put mm -hmm. Alistair with him. He fucks up, Alistair. You know what Alistair does. Mm. He will break his hand. And then, no, speed. that's not what I'm saying. But yes, I am saying that. <laughs> but a threat is a threat enough. You separate the man and the woman from each other. That way you isolate them. This is what you do with your enemies. Divide and conquer. We can put up with me. Or with Arthur. There you go. Whatever it is, make sure this divisive. They do not sleep together. They do not eat together. They do not. They're never together. Then no plans can happen. I'm inclined to agree with that. Isn't that the easiest approach to the situation? Mm -hmm. And if it comes down to it, and the man steers us wrong, I'm pretty sure Alistair has a way of steering back on the right path. Yep. And, uh... If you are set to take them, that would be my suggestion. Then that's what we'll do. The dog are back? Dog warriors. <laughs> Somewhere out in the dell, as the sun is setting, as the sky is turning a shade of orange and pink, you 
hear the sounds of dogs barking somewhere out in the fields, somewhere beyond the hills, echoing down through okay. Hastings. Is it the same like amount of dogs we heard last time? Oh, yes. Or more? A cacophony of dogs howling out in the hills. And we will stop here and resume on episode 38 here briefly.